Okay, I'm going to do up a video for you guys um, about uh, XE, uh, carpet replacement, insulation, installation, uh, aerial change, as electric aerial change, um, new Bluetooth player, and a little bit of rust repairs, um, and rear speaker installation. So, anyway, um, first job is to get the parts uh, you need uh, obviously new carpet um, you can get two sorts you can get the OEM or you can get the uh, aftermarket ones which is a split system so you got front and back carpet um, insulation wise I just use these boys car builders but you can buy it from anywhere um, I bought two sorts one was the thick stuff uh, which is the heavy duty um, I put that all on the firewall and the rest of it I laid down which is a light mill uh, six mil light duty on the rest of the car so um, anyway I'll run through the process what we did so yeah, step one um, obviously you got to disconnect the battery uh, mine's in the boot so I've got a different setup up the front um, and uh, we've got to pull the seats out so first thing you do is pull these seats out you've got to go from underneath the car so just jack it up get under there and uh, undo the four seats are obvious which ones they are the challenge is they are old bolts so you're probably gonna find they won't come out very good so give them a bit of a hit with um, wire a uh, wire brush a uh, bit of um, WD-40 um, and uh, they should come out. Use a rattle gun once you've got them moving um, because the threads are like that long. So, um, so both front seats out. Um, so then take the rear seats out. Everyone gets worried about taking out the rear seats on these. They are very easy. Thing is you can't break anything, which is silly. You put your knee there and give that a hit pretty hard as a solid bit and then you lift it up at the same time. It won't break. There's nothing in there to break. Um, so once you've got the rear out you take this out which is very easy there's two bolts it's obvious and then you push upwards to get them out from there centre console comes out uh, depending on your shifter type I've got a C4 in this one because it's an after so, uh, well, it's a different setup um, but you'll have a, either the plastic or the C4 shifter the plastic version one you've got to come from underneath to get that out C4 one's easy T-bar little grommet little screw there um, and pop out and job done so center console two screws in there take them out and then uh, pull the center console out that way there's an air vent underneath there which will get stuck but um, give it lift it upwards and lift it upwards and then outwards it'll be fine so then you've got all that out and then you got to rip the carpet out just start from the front to the back it's fine um, yeah that, that'll work and then you'll probably find that uh, that's where all the surprises will happen um, so they will either be rust or um, insulation stuck to the ground but someone's glued it or whichever happens it doesn't matter it is what it is so basically uh, when I pulled mine up it was actually pretty good um, only issue I had was uh, the rust was some rust in the footwell driver's foot well um, mine was right up the back there that was a relatively mild repair uh, yeah, small repair whatever um, so I just cleaned it all up with a grinder and a grinding disc and all that um, there's also this really this thick stuff on there use a light uh, chisel to get that off um, pretty straightforward it is a bit of work it's a couple of hours work straight up these are notorious, the XEs, XDs, potentially XFs are notorious for the leaks in the platinum, which is this bit here. So there's two, two holes that are supposed to be left open all the time, but leaves and crap over the years block them. There's your holes, one on each side, they get blocked by leaf litter and they uh, stop leaking. Um, so yeah, anyway, so your rust repairs have got to be done. Um, I would recommend uh, getting you do all the cleaning up yourself and then getting in one of those portable welder dudes who can come in with a piece of metal and fix it up. If it's a whole big job, obviously you're going to probably go out to a panel beater, a bloke who can smash the welding. Um, right, so once that's done, 
go through the rest of the car and make sure there's no other rust. Oh, there's sometimes a little bits of surface rust on the back. That's just purely from the rubbing motion of the seat, rubbing through the metal. Um, so give that little bit of a clean up and a bit of kill rust paint on it. Um, and then, uh, oh, then, then there's the opposite. So, trim needs to come out. Obviously, sorry, I missed that before. Gosh, the trim has to all come out, which is all the side, all the seat belts, all that. This is all self expanded. My only advice is get a photo of how the bolts go together and how the seat belts go together before you pull it all out. So, sorry, forgot about the trim. Anyway, so once it's out, it's all good. Um, then, once you, all your rust repairs are done, you've done a full clean, uh, make sure you vacuum it, uh, make it all pretty, you put your insulation in. So you put the metal stuff in, the heavy duty up the front, um, in the firewall area, right across the top, right across the front there. I went up to about here. Uh, sorry, just, just about here. Only because I've got a turbo in this and, I, and there's an awful lot of heat coming through. Um, so, yeah, so after that the insulation goes in. So like I said, heavy duty and then the light duty for the rest of it all the way through. So after that, you want a bit of padding for your feet. So you're not you're not hitting on awful hard insulation with just a layer of the carpet. So you buy your little insulation pads. Um, these this stuff comes in a roll. Um, so make sure you you plonk it in there. So it's nice and soft under your feet. So only just do the bit around here. Don't go near these edges. Whatever, go off that at least that far. These will not go on if you have thick insulation under it nor will the center console so do not go anywhere near here just do your feet the, the metal stuff will do the job you don't need to do anything else so and the center console is a very tight fit so it'll only have the handle the layer of the thick the insulation the metal stuff it will not handle the thick woolly stuff um, so from there once that's done um, you gotta uh, put the carpet in now Aftermarket stuff will come with no holes. You gotta cut your holes yourself. So I just used my old carpet as a template. Just use it over there. Use it on a template on the ground and you just cut the cut the big holes. Um, now the instructions say for the little holes or the seat holes, etc. Lay the carpet in. Um, uh, and then start from the center. So you basically cut out your trans hole, your airband hole, lay the carpet in so it's all central. Now there will be overlap on each side. Um, and then cut out the two holes on this side here for the seat and the rear seat um, mount, which is there. Um, do that on the other side as well. And then put your center console in, make sure she's nice and tight. Push all the carpet down, 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 down. And then do the other holes on here, here. And again, on the other side through there. There for all the seat melting and seat, seat belt meltings. Right, it's, you use a really sharp knife. Do not even bother unless you have a very, very sharp knife. It is a nightmare if you don't. Um, so once the carpet's in, what you do is then put the passenger seat in only. Don't put the driver's seat in yet, yet, because I'll explain in a minute. Um, so put the passenger seat in, get your uh, measurements around here of how much you need. You only need about that much coming up the wall. You, you don't want to be coming all the way up here because it gets in the way of the wiring and all that. Just enough to tuck under, probably leaving yourself about two centimeters or an inch. All right, so put the passenger side trim in, put that in, put the back, put the seat belt, put all that back together, obviously. Um, and then throw the, the back seat in if you want and obviously put all this back in. Um, driver's side, then do the driver's side. The only reason I say don't put the driver's side seat in is because that um, over there is really hard to get in when, you, when you're when you big like me. So put the driver's side seat once you've got the trim in. Um, put the driver's side seat in and away you go. Back seat can go in, as I said. Um, that's about it for that part of the installation. I'll do the next video for the rest.